Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, we were talking about the Ricardian equivalence under the overlapping generation model and in, under overlapping generation we talked about that how benevolence matter a lot and uh, benevolence matters a lot because when we talk about the intergenerational wealth transfer then that has impact on the Ricardian equivalence. The smoothing of consumption when you have the uh, tax burden or the debt burden. So, uh, now we will uh, we are extending it further and we are trying to see that what happens when we have the uncertainty with regard to or some kind of credit market asymmetry that how when we say that the in the banking system when you go to lend money you are being offered a lower rate of interest but when you borrow from the banks then banks charge uh, you or banks offers you a loan at a uh, at a higher rate of interest so if if the banks are offering you uh, the loan at the higher rate of interest it means that borrowing and lending scenarios are not same now with these borrowing and lending scenarios you have to understand that the role of of uh, 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 macro foundations matter a lot and these macro foundations will help you understand your or it will help you build the basic understanding about how the banking sector operates and when we superimpose the condition of the government then how we can understand the behavior of the government different agents how how agents react to uh, the situation that we have uh, because of the credit market asymmetry in those situations what will be the the reactions of the representative agent whether the current consumption uh, the representative agent will have to compromise then we will be also talking about the credit market uh, asymmetry with regard to the limited commitment. Limited commitment in the sense that when we say that you have the borrowing rate higher charged by the banks then we have to justify that how these things are happening. Now in the field of credit market you have something called limited commitment when the when the lender is not satisfied with the information revealed by the borrower then the lender may ask the borrower to deposit some amount as a, or something some wealth as a collateral. Now this collateral will play a very crucial role and this, this collateral will play a crucial role, role in the sense that the representative agent uh, borrowing capacity will depend upon the value of the collateral asset. So suppose you went to the bank and you asked the bank that okay I want to apply for a loan and I want to purchase a house then what is the value of that house so the the bank manager says that uh, so the bank manager asks you that what is the value of the house then you mention that it is about 40 lakhs and uh, i want uh, the financing from you around 30 lakhs because the rest of the amount i can manage now in that situation the amount that the bank is going to give you it will in some cases if you do not fulfill certain criteria then in, in some cases bank may ask you that whether you have any kind of savings account or any kind of uh, extra saving, long term saving that you are doing or any kind of wealth that you have since the banks, a bank is not having any information about you. So the document verification may not be just sufficient. So it may ask that if you have uh, land, if you are holding or if you are owning any asset, valuable asset then you can deposit as an or you can attach that as a collateral and then we will be ready to or we will be happy to give you the loan of 30 lakhs. Why does that happen? Because in the credit market when you are not repaying then banks will not have any opportunity if, if, if they do not have any collateral. So, uh, banks will be happy to to extend you the loan only when they find it easier that in case if the consumer is going to default then the bank will still have the hand on the collateral and then they can sell it in the market and whatever the value they will have either the low or high they will always be having 
no loss scenario. Now, keeping this thing in mind, uh, these things in mind, we can think about how we can go about improving it and understanding the model, model in a much better way. So here we have, so here we have the reference book will remain same, the credit market asymmetry, Stephen de Williamson. And uh, I would request you to refer uh, the Williamson book because it is very important. Now here we have the basics of credit market imperfections, introduce asymmetric information to explain the credit market imperfections, how limited uh, commitment makes collateral important in the credit markets model, introduce different social security schemes to counter the relevance of the Ricard and equivalence. So these are the concepts that we are talking about. Here we have the here we have the credit market imperfections. So uh, let's start how we are dealing with. So normally in the credit market, the borrowing and lending when we have borrowing and lending rates different than how the consumers when the consumer is acting as a lender, how the behavior of the consumer will change when it is acting as a borrower. So those things I think these things we have covered already. So now here we are seeing that. Uh, what happens when we explain the credit market asymmetry? So, credit market asymmetry implies that if R2 is the rate of borrowing, then and if R2 is greater than R1, if suppose in the market we have two types of interest rate. So, one is the R2 which is higher than R1 which means that the asymmetry starts when if R2 is the, the borrowing rate and R1 is the lending rate. So, if you are going to borrow, you are supposed to pay a higher interest rate compared to when you lend the money. And the if you try to drive the budget constraint under these two scenarios, that if the consumer is lender, then this is what is his his future savings because in current period we are not talking about, we are talking about the future period scenario. So if he is the lender, so this is his uh, future consumption, right? If he is uh, borrower then he will be supposed to have uh, this kind of the scenario. So, 1 plus R2. Uh, now, here we have Ct plus 1 is equal to Yt plus 1 minus Tt plus 1 uh, plus 1 plus R2. So, 1 plus R2 is attached with the borrowing. So, here we are saying that if saving is less than 0 which means that he is borrowing. So, this saving is not positive it, it is just that this particular individual is supposed to pay at this rate R2 rate. So, this is what we are assuming here. Now, similarly, if you try to derive the budget constraint of the representative agent, so if he is lender, then this is what is the lifetime budget constraint agent is having. So, considering these two scenarios where you have a R1 and R2, the budget constraint where the representative agent will be playing is nothing but AEF here we have. So, this area will be available for the representative agent to play a role. So, here it is A, E, F, right. Now, we will be working in most of these situations in our setup with this. So, this is the lending part, this is the borrowing part. If he goes here, suppose, if he goes here, right, if, if suppose he goes here, so this will be the, if he operates in this zone, he will be the lender. If he operates is in this zone, he will be the borrower because this is his income and this is the the future uh, income this is the current income disposable income so if he is operating beyond this he is the borrower if he is operating in this he is the lender so if you think about then a e f will be the budget constraint of the representative agent here we are mentioning that effects of a tax cut for a consumer with different borrowing and lending rates so what we are saying that the in the beginning when we had the budget constraint. So, here one was the, so the individual is more or less, let us talk about the A 1 B. At this level, the representative agent is having future consumption of this much amount and current consumption of this, right. The individual is happy at I 3, which means that here is the equilibrium consumption. So, what we find that at E 1, this representative agent does not have to go for enough kind of uh, borrowing. But yes, even if he goes for borrowing, he, he will have a limited opportunity to go because he is happy here, no chance. But if, if, if I am thinking about the consumption, so the amount that he can borrow is this much, 
but government has given him the incentive some kind of tax relief so now he moves here what what he does is that e2 point is that you can see clearly here if he has been given the tax incentive that the representative agent is having now at e2 the future consumption is going down current consumption is increasing which means that whatever tax incentive that the government has given to this particular individual it is being used for the current consumption so if this this particular individual simply uses that for current consumption the future consumption declines so here we do not see that much increase whereas if individual was given the opportunity to be at equilibrium then he would have gone for g but given these two scenarios he is better off at e2 right E1 was the initial scenario. So, with the tax cut, the current consumption increases. So, this is what we try to mention that whatever amount that uh, comes as in tax relief, the individual may, uh, individual's consumer behavior may not be impacted because this is beyond. So, consumer may would like to be happy here, but he is still uh, comfortable in dealing with both situations E1 and E2. So, endowments at E1 and E2 are not going to impact the consumption behavior except that and E2 he has the scenario in which the consumption in the current period is higher and here consumption in the future period is lower. So, this is what here for such a consumer in tax cut will be in spent on the current consumption and this is what we always mention that this is say that in these situations even if you have the borrowing scenario, so borrowing scenario may not disturb the consumer's equilibrium not the competitive equilibrium. There are some more angles to look at. So, this is the simplest scenario where we are just assuming that here we have the borrower and lending scenario when we have the credit market asymmetry, but credit market asymmetry has lot to uh, play a role beyond this credit market imperfections and the financial crisis. So, in case of credit market imperfections when you have the asymmetric information. So, this asymmetric information what would be? So, the asymmetric information basically tells that the, the uh, individual when two agents are interacting one agent has the information advantage over the another which means that if you have two agents A and B if both are having a some kind of a business interaction then if A is supposed to reveal some information to B, B may not have the exact information about A which A is already having because A has to reveal the exact information which B should have, but A is having opportunity that A may not reveal the same amount, amount of information. So, here it happens before the deal of the contract. So, you may have uh, you may have gone to buy suppose for the in the loan market suppose a borrower goes to the bank, bank is a lender the, so the consumer is the borrower. So, if a consumer is going to bank asking for loan, bank will ask the customer to furnish certain details which are of the uh, mandatory. Uh, so, there will be some mandatory requirements and this mandatory requirement the representative agent has to reveal to the bank. Bank says that okay, this information is enough and we are sanctioning you the loan. Now, suppose this representative agent had some involvement with law and order and some issues with the past records or this particular representative agent has not revealed the information that he has already had one more loan and he has not paid back, still it is still open. Then in that situation this extra loan that the bank has agreed to disburse to this particular person will be extra burden and this may lead to a default in future. So, hiding that kind of information that leads to what we call it the asymmetric information. Limited commitment when borrowers may choose to default, lenders can overcome limited uh, commitment with collateral. So, limited commitment in the sense that if the bank has no uh, complete uh, I would say trust on the borrowers revealing of information then banks can put a clause that if the if you are going to put some collateral or attach some collateral with the loan then only we will be we will be accepting your request otherwise we will not because if the consumer is going to default then it will be very difficult for the bank to recover because once you have dispersed once you have settled the contract 
then then the reinforcement becomes uh, really uh, difficult and just to avoid that banks in the beginning itself and uh, the upfront they ask for attachment of certain collateral which means that the the commitment that the borrower is making it may not be exact so to fulfill the the requirement of commitment they attach with the limited commitment scenarios suppose that a fraction how it works so recently we had in india a banking sector upheavals and banking sector upheavals led to a lot of trouble in the economy and this trouble had created a big buzz and this big buzz it ha has a lot of important role to play now suppose that a fraction a of the borrowers in the economy are good borrowers while a fraction 1 minus a is a bad borrower so think about here we are talking about a as a good borrower 1 minus a as a bad borrower suppose the loan quantity sanction to each good or bad borrower is l banks charge the interest rate r2 on loans and pay r1 on deposits so which means that Uh, the credit market asymmetry exists and exists and here r2 is the borrowing interest rate and r1 is the lending interest rate so here in terms of inflow and outflow let's understand banks when he is banks when it is receiving the deposit from the customer it has to pay l into 1 plus r1 when he is receiving and when when he is he is re receiving on the loan so, so suppose bank is giving the loan to the customer customer is paying back the in the form of emi or whatever interest income individual so this is the i would say asset and liability scenario if you think about this is the asset for the bank this is the liability because this has bank has to pay and this bank has to keep so this is the income that it gets for the banks to remain floating in a business this has to be higher than this otherwise bank will not be able to survive but here one thing to note that banks will not receive any payment from 1 minus a who are bad borrowers so when we say that we have the interest rate spread or default premium so default premium is nothing but the the extra money that the bank is charging from the borrowers uh, for defaulting risks which means that when i say that the borrowing rate is higher than the lending then borrowing rates are higher because the banks feel that if there be any default then these these customers may not be responsible but banks will have to be solely responsible and for that reason and since there is a requirement uh, there is a uh, there is a chance that there will be higher defaults so just to avoid that you have the uh, bank charges the premium for that so if if the if the default it is higher bank is going to incur huge losses so just to make sure that it does not incur that kind of loss it goes for charging a higher rate of interest now let's define the profit of the bank so here pi is equal to al 1 plus r2 minus l 1 plus r1 is equal to la 1 plus r2 minus 1 plus r1 in equilibrium each bank must earn zero profits right so here we are talking about that that here at equilibrium which means that if both are Uh, here at equilibrium this profit will be zero which means that uh, a l a r 2 is uh, equal to l 1 plus r 1 right so here we are mentioning about now zero profit which means that if a l 1 plus r 2 is equal to l 1 plus r 1 then here r 2 is equal to can be written as 1 plus r 1 upon a minus 1 right now once i am writing r2 is equal to 1 plus r1 upon a then the role of a will matter what is a here good borrowers so here we have assumed a as good borrowers 1 minus a as bad borrower 1 plus r1 upon a is nothing but if a is increasing right 
which means that 1 plus R1, so overall ratio will be lower, which means that the rate of interest on borrowing will also be lower. But the moment you have A lesser, which means that if good number of borrowers are decreasing, then you have a R2 will be greater than R1 because if you just solve, then this gets cancelled and then here you have the, the scenarios. So, the default risk premium that we mentioned, it is mostly because of these good borrowers. So, in the Indian banking scenario, if you have gone through the consolidation of bank and certain developments, you will find that when the, when the economy faces a situation when you have the large number of default scenarios, large number of defaults, so which, which means that the individuals are making or the borrowers are not paying on time to the banks, banks will not even give a lower rate of interest or some concessional loan to even good borrowers. So, good borrowers who are not on default and they have made uh, regular payments and they are the, um, the credible customers, they also pay higher rate of interest because of this. So, default premium is bearable by, is applicable on even the good borrower, but it is happening because of the bad borrower. So, since bank, for the bank, it is very difficult to differentiate between good borrower and bad borrower. So, the size of A will matter as long as size of A is higher, your borrowing rate is. Uh, so, we are moving towards a situation where the efficiency, the credit market asymmetry is getting lower. So, rate of borrowing will also be lower and the rate of interest, uh, rate of uh, lending will also, so both will not have so much a spread, but as soon as we see in decrease in A, the interest rate spread or the default risk premium will go up. So, this is what we have. So, this is what is the scenario. Asymmetric information in the credit market and the effect of a decrease in credit worthy borrowers. So, these are the scenarios where we are. So, here it is A, E, D. So, here original uh, is this with the decrease in A, we are seeing that it is getting much steeper and this is what we are looking at A. Uh, so, here which means that this representative consumer will have the compromise on the current consumption. Even good borrower face higher consumption falls for all borrowers matches observation current finance. Uh, so, here the, this, these are the, so if you think from the macro perspective you will find that the A scenarios was quite applicable for the global financial crisis when we had large number of defaults on the mortgage loans and these mortgage loans had impacted the economy very, uh, uh, very adversely and, and I would say that if you think about how this R2, uh, 1 plus R1 upon A is, is, uh, is mattering, it is because of this. So, this is uh, what we mention about. Now, we mention about the limited commitment and credit market. So, we will be now introducing to a new topic we'll, we, we, uh, which will be linked to the credit market asymmetry and limited commitment has lot a uh, role to play and this may also be linked with what we discuss about the overlapping generation. But overall what it appears that the in the credit market when you have different borrowing and lending rates the the different borrowing and lending rates are not just because banks are directly involved it is because of also the type of borrowers that we have so if you have um, a good number of borrowers then uh, this will expand otherwise if you have a decreasing then this is what we have so decrease in credit worthy borrowers so, this is uh, what and then here we are talking about the situation, but we will start this in the next class. But if you want to, if you want to read more about this scenario, this scenario makes a lot of sense. If you want to read more about the scenario, then I would request that please refer uh, the, the 2008-9 global financial crisis, how it worked and when you had this shoot up of the borrowing rate when we see that we have lot of uncertainty in the in the economy so normally you have the the interest rate incentives given but we are not taking into account any business cycle phenomena here here we are just directly putting up the framework so do not link with the scenario that when you have the uncertainty at that time governments go uh, governments go for a lot of incentives 
uh, in, in interest rate incentives or tax incentives. So, those things we are not considering. Here we are, sin, sin, uh, we are simply considering the, the number of borrowers and lenders. So, that matters a, a lot and we will be stopping it here. Thank you. Thank you so much.